Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome little Linux powered mini PC from Menace Forum known as the Desk Mini UM350X. This comes preloaded with Manjaro and this is one of the least expensive Linux mini PCs that I've seen on the market right now. You can pick this up with either 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage or up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Inside of the box, you're going to receive a mounting bracket. We also get a couple HDMI cables, a 65 watt power supply, and a SATA adapter because this will support an extra 2.5 inch drive in the lid. We'll take a look at where it goes in a second. But uh, everything you need to get up and running is here. They don't sell this specific model bare bones. You either have to pick it up with the lowest amount of RAM or you could pick it up with their high end model. It's really up to you. So getting inside of here is really easy. We've got the push lid like we've seen on other Menace Forum PCs. And the one we're going to be taking a look at in this video has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. As you can see, that RAM is in dual channel and it's super easy to get inside of here and upgrade that M.2 or the RAM if you want to go larger. It will support up to 64 gigabytes. But to add extra storage, all we need to do is mount it in the top lid here and connect the included SATA adapter that comes in the box. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we get a USB Type-C port. This is Gen 2. The yellow port is a USB 3.0 port with a 2 amp max output. And the blue port up front here is USB 3.1 Gen 2. We also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack up front here. Moving around to the back, we get two more USB 3.1 ports. Full size HDMI, which does support 4K 60 out. Full size display, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. And obviously we have our power in here. Now the way this is set up, it's going to pull air in from the bottom and exhaust it from the rear. We've got that vent right under all of those ports. And at 25 watts with the Ryzen CPU we have here, it does a pretty decent job. But taking it up to 35, this little fan can get pretty loud. But luckily, out of the box, it's at 25. And when it comes to the specs, the 350X is using a Ryzen 5 3550H. We've got four cores, eight threads, a base clock of 2.1 gigahertz with a boost up to 3.7. This will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and it's recommended to run it in dual channel because it will help out with the built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics, and these run at up to 1200 megahertz with this little chip. This also has Wi-Fi 5 built-in and Bluetooth 4.2, but remember, we've got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the rear. And for the operating system, right out of the box, this is running Manjaro Linux with the Plasma desktop. All right, so here it is. Uh, this thing's actually really snappy. I was surprised by how quick this thing is. As you can see, I've got a lot of games and some emulators that we're going to be testing out in this video. It's definitely not marketed as a gaming machine, but for older stuff, this does a really great job. Downloading new applications in Manjaro is a cinch. We can head right here to the Add and Remove Software Center. You can go through, you can search, you can uh, enable the AUR if you want to, just to get other applications that aren't initially listed here. Tons of stuff to choose from if you want to get a photo editor, a video editor, lots of stuff here. But you know, with a little PC like this, a lot of people are going to be using a small form factor PC like this for everyday web use. Web browsing, email checking, document editing, and even some video playback. Here we are at the Manjaro website. Let's hit up their software section. Everything loads up pretty quickly. This does have Wi-Fi 5 and Gigabit Ethernet, so you've got a couple options to connect. Personally, I'm on Wi-Fi right now, but usually I do Ethernet just to get that super stable connection. Head over to AMD's website. As you can see, all the images populate really quickly. And when it comes to video playback, we've got more than enough power here, even for 4K video playback. Make sure we're at 4K 60 here. Give it a second and we'll play. I've got stats for nerds up in the top left hand corner. It'll give us an idea of how many frames this is dropping. Now, like I mentioned, this is a 1080p monitor, but we are playing this at 4K 60 from YouTube. It's streaming over Wi-Fi. And I got zero drop frames out of this. I tested a few more just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. And yeah, I mean, this little chip can handle 4K video playback quite well. So yeah, if you wanted to stream from your favorite apps or even play 4K videos from internal or external drives, it's going to work out just fine. But you know, one of the main things that I wanted to test with this was a little bit of PC gaming. Remember, we're using Linux here, so we're going to be using Proton with these Steam games, just like the Steam Deck does. 
we're starting out light here with Shredder's Revenge, and you might notice I have a little overlay in the top left-hand corner. This is Mango HUD, and I personally use Go Overlay just to get it set up very quickly in Manjaro. Works out really good, and you can get it from the AUR. There's more information that you can display, but I just went with the basics here. And obviously, these indie games are going to run well. Next up, we've got Dirt 3. It's an older one, still pretty fun to play, and right now we're at 1080p medium and getting an average of 82 FPS. Looking pretty good here also at medium settings. I also wanted to throw at least one source game in here. We've got Left 4 Dead 2. And unfortunately, with Dirt 3 in this one, I couldn't get that Mango HUD overlay to work. I tried to comment out a few things, but unfortunately, it just wouldn't show up with these two games. And yeah, I mean, these older titles and indie games are going to run great on this little chip. But I want to throw at least one newer AAA game at it, and that's going to be Cyberpunk 2077. And here it is. So, I'm going to tell you, we're not quite at 60 FPS, not by a long shot, but this did work much better than I thought it was gonna. We're at 720p low with FSR set to performance, and we can get 35 FPS of this game on average. Given that we're working with a 3000 series Ryzen mobile chip with integrated Vega graphics, this isn't that bad. I also wanted to test out a little bit of emulation, and when it comes to the lower end stuff like Dreamcast, N64, SNES, PC Engine, you're not going to have any problem with it. Here's PSP using PPSSPP, Vulcan Backend, Midnight Club 3, which is a harder one to run, at 4x resolution. And going into this, I had a good feeling it would handle PSP, PS2, GameCube, and Wii really well. I've done a lot of testing with these 3000 series chips, and the 3550H isn't a bad little setup. Next up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator at 720p. This is one of my go-to tests. This is Automotalista, and specifically in the area we're in right now, you will get a lot of lag on lower-end chips, but we're at a steady 60 with this one. And since I was working with the Dolphin emulator at the time, I figured we'd test one Wii game. Here's Tatsunoko versus Capcom. 720p, Vulcan back in, and even with all of these effects and particles on screen, it's got a steady 60 FPS out of it. Another thing I like to take a look at with these mini PCs is total power consumption from the wall. While I'm doing my testing, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter, and remember, we're at 25 watts on the TDP right now. At idle, it's around 11 watts. Average gaming, 33, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 51 watts. And that's with the GPU and the CPU at 100%, totally maxed out. Overall, not a bad little Linux mini PC, especially given the price. I've seen these get on up there. It's not the most powerful little mini PC that we've taken a look at, and it is using a 3000 series Ryzen APU. But for everyday desktop needs, some really good emulation, and some light gaming, you'd be good to go with something like this if you're looking for a mini PC that comes with Linux right out of the box. So if you're interested in learning more about the Desk Mini UM350X, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this with Linux or a different distro, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.